we know that it is said the more we repeat a certain thing the more we remember it isn't it and that's why we used to call a for apple a for apple so many times in our childhood so basically repetition or revising things increases the memory of that learning so why is it so well the basis for is it long term potentiation so long term potentiation says that due to repeated firing of a presynaptic neuron and uh, due to the release of the neurotransmitters basically increased the release of the neurotransmitters which occur when the presynaptic neuron is repeatedly firing there will be increased response from the postsynaptic neuron so there will be increase in response and when we talk about a response basically we are talking about the increased voltage change in the postsynaptic neuron that is increased epsp which ultimately will lead to increase in the number of the action potentials so whenever the amplitude of epsp increases the frequency of action potential increases in the postsynaptic neuron so in simple terms repeated firing of the presynaptic neurons will increase the postsynaptic response so let us see what is the mechanism of long term potentiation see the fundamentals of uh, synaptic transmission we know that uh, whenever uh, there is action potential in the presynaptic neuron it causes a release of the neurotransmitters right there is release of the neurotransmitters in the synaptic cleft and it acts on the postsynaptic neuron it binds to certain receptors on the postsynaptic neuron and if it is an excitatory neurotransmitter it leads to generation of epsp if epsp reaches to threshold it leads to generation of action potential and these two events are happening in the postsynaptic neuron now when we talk about uh, long term potentiation we are telling repeated firing so this is the keyword repeated firing of the presynaptic neuron and whenever there is repeated firing each action potential is going to release more and more neurotransmitters and for long term potentiation the neurotransmitter involved is excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate this glutamate has two types of receptors on the postsynaptic neuron so one of these are ampa receptors ampa receptors or ampa receptors and the other ones are nmda receptors so let let us make another receptors nmda receptors so this glutamate can bind to both the receptors right so glutamate binds to ampa receptors and nmda receptors but you see these nmda receptors are actually blocked by magnesium ions so these do not open instead it is the ampa receptors which open and due to opening of ampa receptors there is entry of sodium ions causing generation of epsp so this is normally happening but with the increased release of the neurotransmitters what happens that more ampa receptors will open and the more sodium ions will enter into the postsynaptic neuron and because of increased epsp that is more voltage change it will throw off magnesium ions from the nmda receptor so this block of the nmda receptor is overcome by means of the voltage change increased voltage change magnesium will move out and you know the glutamate is available so it will also bind to this nmda receptors and these nmda receptors allow entry of calcium ions so once they open there is entry of calcium ions so ampa receptors cause the entry of the sodium ions which leads to epsp and nmda receptors cause entry of calcium ions now because of the entry of the calcium ions there are certain downstream changes within the postsynaptic neuron what are these changes calcium basically binds with a calcium binding protein that is calmodulin and this in turn leads to activation of calcium calmodulin pathway calcium calmodulin pathway in turn activates calcium calmodulin kinase which will cause the phosphorylation of the ampa receptors so this is important phosphorylation of ampa receptors plus there is also activation of other pathways which leads to more 
insertion of AMPA receptors on the presynaptic neuron. So what we saw here, here, so we draw very less receptors. Due to increase in calcium, the number of the AMPA receptors here are going to increase. And due to the phosphorylation of the receptors, the conductance of the AMPA receptors is increased. So number is also increased and whatever was available, there will be increase in conductance so that more sodium ions can enter through the same channels. So what is happening basically? The same neurotransmitter will now lead to increased response in the postsynaptic neuron. So that is one mechanism of long term potentiation. There are other things also which are happening. One is release of a gas that is the nitric oxide from the postsynaptic neuron and this gas causes changes in the presynaptic neuron such that with each action potential now there will be increased release of the neurotransmitter as well. So there are changes in the postsynaptic neuron and there are changes in the presynaptic neuron as well. Third, there is phosphorylation of transcription factors as well and this causes changes at the genetic level causing increase in the synthesis of proteins and with increase in the synthesis of proteins there will be formation of more synaptic connections with the same neuron. So there are dendrites right so they will form more synaptic connections with the same neuron such that the EPSP will now be generated in these dendrites as well and there are high chances of EPSP to reach to the threshold and to be maintained at high level for a longer time, isn't it? So that action potential can be maintained. So key word here was repeated firing because you see only when repeated firing will happen, there will be increased release of the neurotransmitter which can bind AMPA receptors such that the EPSP reaches to that level so that the magnesium block of the NMDA receptor is removed. So quickly we will revise this using a flow chart. So I will leave you with this flow chart. What it says, with repeated firing, glutamate released from presynaptic neuron, which binds to both the receptors on the postsynaptic neuron, but only the AMPA channels open, due to which there is sodium entry, which causes depolarizing, uh, uh, depolarizes the postsynaptic neuron, and uh, sufficient depolarization. So there should be adequate amount, critical amount of depolarization should be there such that the magnesium block from the NMDA receptor is uh, removed and it, this opens the NMDA channels causing calcium entry. Then because of calcium entry there is activation of the second messenger's pathway in the postsynaptic neuron. This will make changes in the presynaptic neuron as well as the postsynaptic neuron. So in the postsynaptic neuron, there will be insertion of more AMPA channels in the postsynaptic membrane plus phosphorylation of the AMPA channels will cause increased conductance and hence increased sensitivity of the postsynaptic neuron to glutamate. Then in the postsynaptic neuron, there is phosphorylation of the transcription factors so that the new synaptic connections can grow. And in the presynaptic neuron, there is some retrograde changes also. So there is release of uh, nitric oxide which enters into the presynaptic neuron and this causes increased glutamate release by the presynaptic neuron. And all these events cause persistently more EPSPs and action potential. So every time we don't want repetition, right? For some time when there is repeated firing of the presynaptic neuron, later on because of increased sensitivity, with a single action potential also, there will be persistently more EPSPs and action potentials. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, do press the like button. Do share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Open. Thank you.